With Halo Reach being released to the MCC, a lot of new players have recently come to play this game. Now, it's not as simple as just plug in and play. There are many things you need to understand about Halo Reach to do better. So hopefully in this video, I'm going to give you the 10 tips for you to do better at Halo Reach. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. <music> How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you a little gameplay news tips and tricks kind of thing when it comes to Halo Reach. If you like these kind of tips and trick videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Drop out like really helps out the video and channel a lot. It gets more exposure and helps to get more people up to date with how to do better in Halo Reach. So let's get right into the video here. The first tip I want to give you guys is to understand how Bloom works, as it's obviously the main mechanic that's going to be affecting your weapon spread and your accuracy quite often. So you want to make sure you're pacing your shots to make sure your shots are accurate. If you check your reticle, you have an outer reticle and an inner reticle. The inner reticle will actually determine where your bullets are going to go. The outer one really just helps determine red reticle range, which will actually help with your bullet magnetism and accuracy. So you want to make sure you're in red reticle range when using a specific weapon. Well, a good way to reduce your bloom is by crouching. When you crouch, it, your bloom retracts actually way faster than it would if you're just standing up. So if you're going for those long range shots, make sure you're crouching to get some shots down range faster and more accurately. And also taking account when it comes to different title settings. There is uh, vanilla, there is title update and hardcore, which I'll get into later in this video. But one thing that actually really benefited with the reduced bloom and title update settings, which is your basic team slayer, is the needle rifle. The needle rifle has become a legit power weapon in title update settings. So if you ever see that, pick that one up. Tip number two, as I mentioned earlier, is actually understanding the settings that you are playing. There are three different settings you'll find while playing Halo Reach. There are vanilla settings, which you'll find for invasion, griff ball, and infection. And then you'll find title update settings for pretty much everything else in the social matchmaking that's including Team Slayer. And they will have the hardcore settings, which is zero boom and no sprint with some various other changes as well in only the hardcore playlist. On what the differences are between vanilla and title update settings, I will link it in the description down below. Essentially, what you need to know about the differences are that there's bleed through, the certain armor abilities are changed as well, and obviously there is a bloom reduction when it comes to title update settings. Again, if you want to know the details, check out the video linked in the description below, describing in detail what the differences are. Number three on the list here are understanding the weapon and health pack spawns as it's crucial to understand where these weapons are being picked up because most of the time you're spawning with, with either a DMR or a Magnum start. Now DMR is pretty dang good. You don't have to worry about weapons, pick up weapons too much, but when you're starting with the Magnum, you definitely need to understand where the weapons are located on each map. My suggestion would be just to go into custom games, possibly even forge if you're on console and just check out the different map weapon spawn locations and also check out what times they are. Various weapons have different timers on them as well, so that's also very important to keep in mind. Mainly, you want to understand where those power weapons are spawning, as those are the game-changing weapons you need to know to do, be able to do better in Halo Reach. And also, a very important thing is to understand where the health packs spawn. When you pick up a health pack, your health instantly starts recharging it along with your shields, and so then it can greatly save you in the middle of a gunfight. So understanding where those health packs are spawning, where are those weapons weapons are spawning will greatly increase your ability to do awesome in Halo Reach. Now that we're on the topic of understanding weapon spawns, how about timing those weapons as well? Again, it's very useful to jump into Forge to understand where those weapons are going to be popping up. Uh, generally, at the beginning of every match, you will have every weapon available for you to pick up. Sometimes weapons spawn a little bit later into the match. Again, it's very useful to jump into Forge and custom games to understand where these weapons are spawning and how often they spawn to make sure to keep you guys up to date when everything awesome goes on in the map. Trust me, when I first learned this skill, I actually learned this back in Halo Reach back in the old days and it took me from like a 1 KD player to like a 2.2 KD player from just understanding how to time rocket launch response. Number five on the list is understanding your radar. Radar is crucial if you have it in your game mode. Now this radar in Halo Reach was the first time in the series where they implemented some depth to the radar. So if a darker colored red dot is on your radar, that means an enemy is below you. A brighter color, red, a regular colored red dot will mean that they're on the same level elevation as you and a really bright colored red dot will indicate that they are actually above you. 
Now there are two different techniques I would like to use when, when it comes to the radar. It's not just a tool to know where people are. You can actually use it to your advantage to get people to come after you when you have the advantage on them and they don't realize it until they're dead. So one technique I like to use is what's called radar baiting, where basically you see a guy on a radar, you may kind of wiggle a little bit to show that you're right behind them. They might try to get, take the advantage, think they have the upper hand and you don't realize that they're there, but you're actually camping around the corner with a shotgun. They'll be coming around the corner and getting killed quite easily. Another thing to also keep in mind is that crouching will keep you off the radar. So when you're crouched, you can still move, but you'll be off the radar, which is a great way to be stealthy and sneak up behind people to get assassinations or get a nice flank on players. That's very crucial to know that. And also keep in mind when you're watching players crouch and walk around, it's probably for a good reason and you probably want to crouch with them so then you guys can both be double sneaky and be double as lethal. Number six on the tips here is sprint is your friend. On pretty much every map in this game, you are benefited by using sprint as it helps you get around the map a lot faster, gets you, to, especially to the beginning of the game, helps you get to those power weapons a lot faster than other people may not be using sprint or jetpack or anything like that. And also pretty much every map, you can find some way to use it in a beneficial way. Also keep in mind, unlike in Halo 5, where you can sprint and your health will recharge as well. So it's a great way to evade death when it comes to uh, situations where you think you're all oh, jang, I'm screwed, I gotta get out of here. Well, you can actually sprint away and also recharge your health at the same time. So that's very important to keep in mind when using that ability. Pretty much every time, spawn in with sprint and I will use armor, uh, various other armor abilities uh, for circumstantial situations. Number seven tip would be use a controller or keyboard layout that is comfortable for you. Personally, I like to use the button layout called Bumper Jumper, which basically makes it so that the left bumper is your jump button, right bumper is your melee button, X is what you use to use your armor abilities. Uh, this is a really great feature to use in the game as it will help keep maintain your thumbs on the sticks more often so then you will have better accuracy while in the middle of gunfights. Being able to use the bumpers to jump as well also really helps out with crouch jumps and various other maneuvers. I highly suggest if you're not using Bumper Jumper to give that a go. Now, there are other people that use various other options like green thumb and recon again that's like i like to say use a setting that's perfect for you personally me i like to use bumper jumper many other pro players use bumper jumper as well but also keep in mind other options are available if that works out well for you Keep in mind also what the topic of sensitivity might hear the best sensitivity option out there for you. Uh, there isn't one option that is the best for sensitivity. There is also, again, it just comes out of personal preference. For me, I use three and a half uh, vertical and horizontal sensitivity on modern aiming. Uh, to me, I feel like that's the best combination of uh, mobility and be able to look around while also maintaining accuracy. Some players I've seen use up to 10. They're pretty crazy. Uh, you know, that's up to their personal preference right there. But for me, three and a half works out pretty well for me. I mean, most people you'll find are anywhere from three to six on sensitivity. Number eight on the tips to get better at Halo Reach is understanding the differences between Covenant and human weapons. They're not just the same thing, but just alien or just human versions. They actually have different utilities within the sand weapon sandbox of Halo Reach. For example, the plasma repeater, you think is probably just like a weak ass version of the human assault rifle. Well, actually what a lot of the Covenant weapons are made to do is rip through shields a lot faster and then human weapons do a lot better job of taking out your health. And so then a lot of times what people do is take a Covenant weapon, lay out the shields and then when they'll switch over to the human weapon to get that headshot with like either a magnum or dmr or even use an assault rifle to help spray down somebody as well so keep in mind when you're picking up your weapons in halo reach that using a covenant weapon is great for shields using human weapons are great for health Number nine on the tips to get better at Halo Reach is understanding that precision weapons in Halo Reach are hit scan, meaning that you do not need to lead your shots to hit them accurately. So unlike in Halo 3 or Halo 2 in the MCC, you, you do not need to lead your shots for your bullets to count. So it's a very snappy, great feature, very similar to you'd say in Halo 5 and Halo 4, where you just have to click right on the person's head, it will hit every time. And number 10 on the list here is how to evade deaths. Now there are various techniques you can use. You can just sprint away, you can jump around in corners, but there are certain techniques that players have implemented to help themselves evade death, death a little bit better. One of those techniques is called strong sighting. This technique was actually developed by the old Halo Pro strong sight. What would happen is when they were getting shot, he would turn their back to the person attacking them, look all the way down to the floor, which would end up leaving their head down, looking down to the ground, making it much harder for the enemy player 
player to get that headshot. So when you're taking shots, you know you can't when you're trying to evade, try looking down on the floor and going around the corner around, just walking around it. It works out a lot of times, guys, especially in this game. We're using a DMR where you have to be precisely accurate. There's no spread with it really whatsoever. Another technique a lot of people use, which I don't think is much useful, but I could throw off a lot of players, is what's called Gandhi hopping. This is brought up from the former pro Halo Pro Gandhi, which what he would do is kind of do the same technique as strong side is looking down to the ground, but when he's up in the air, he would actually be clicking in the left stick a bunch of times, you know, repeatedly to uh, do a kind of a crouching maneuver. And what this does, it kind of gives you like a zigzaggy kind of motion while you're jumping in air and kind of hangs you a little bit. And so then it would kind of throw off people's prediction of aim to hopefully get yourself around the corner to evade those shots. And so guys, those are the 10 tips I have for you in Halo Reach to get better at this game. Now there are some more tips I could give you guys, but I want to kind of keep it short and simple for you all. So if you'd like to see more tip videos like this, make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below if you have any tips that were not mentioned in this video and hope we can add them into another one as well if you'd like to see that and if you're new to the channel and want we'll to stay up to date with any halo news or any tips and tricks going on with the halo games make sure you tap subscribe to the channel guys keep yourselves up to date if you're new to me or miss any content from me check out the videos on the screen right now and i'll catch you all in the next video peace out